How's it going YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Andreas Furley and in today's video I'm going to review the day number 25 and the overall bankroll challenge. I said I'm going to turn $24 into $1,000. Let's have a look at how that went. First thing I want to show you guys is all my pot limit on my hands on the micro stakes from PLO2 to PLO25. I think it sort of leaves out PLO2 rec speed. I'm not sure why but um, that's without that everything is in it. So you can see the stakes over here as I said without PLO 1 cent 2 cent regular speed. I don't recall whether we've been playing a lot of these hands at the beginning of the bankroll challenge but they're not in it. As also the mixed games that I've been playing in the bankroll challenge and the tournaments that I played on one of the days are not in this sample as well. Also there's going to be a couple of hands that I've been playing off stream in the sample too and you can see that this will result to 180,000 hands. Note that in the Branko Challenge, I've been playing Fusion and all these other weird games that have been spreading on PokerStars and uh, they are not be counted in this sample here. But just for you to see that how it went overall and at a large database, what's possible when it comes to pot limit on variants exactly. You can see that as a matter of fact, I lost $700 in micro stakes. Yes, it's true. So. You can see that this was done while being at a win rate of 4.6, which is not very high. You could certainly go up to 10. Um, you should probably not play micro stakes if you are at 10 and you should probably play higher. It's not that smart to have a 10 big one per 100 win rate at micro stakes because yeah, it probably means that you just have to work a little bit on your poker game and just play higher stakes if you can afford it, of course. Now we're gonna have a look at the graph here and this is gonna look something along of this. Again, a lot of it, um, especially at the early um, days here, has been played off stream, but most of the things here have been on stream. Um, this is in terms of winnings. You can see that the EV from here to here has been about $300, which is not a lot. It's probably not enough for the pace that I've set from a bankroll challenge. And you can see, especially towards the end, I've been running a lot below EV as well on and off stream as well for the micro stakes in terms of um, big bets and how that looks like or big blinds. It's about 80 blinds in total. Now, um, if you look at the sessions, the last session that I did play on day number 25, I'm gonna look at the hand histories with you guys as well and what went down. I did play another 6,561 hands at uh, yeah, three big blinds win rate, obviously not a good enough sample. And the rake was $271. If we look at it at this um, chart again, or at this Excel file as well, from day number one to day number 26, where we're now, it's sitting at $221 only. You can see that, um, yeah, this obviously manifests in this as well. So it's not just here in Hold Manager, but also here, where I always showed at the beginning of the stream and at the end of the stream, you know, how much uh, I was losing in the session and whatnot. And you can see also that I accounted for 10% rake back, which is probably achievable if you play those um, the deal games all the time and try to get you know every get in every 12 hours and, and just win some cents every here and there obviously now the total rake for the bankroll challenge is $1435 the total rake for the last day has been where is it here maybe this is better $271 if you um, pull up a calculator, which I've done here, you will see that number one, so 271 divided by 6561 equals to 0 0.04. This means that if you multiply that by 100, it's $4 in 100 hands. I played Pilot 25 for the most part. So it will mean that this is about 16, per, 16 big blinds per 100 in rake. So if you play an orbit, your big blind's gone. That's basically what it's saying. Every six hands, you're losing an entire big blind. And that's what's happening in today's games on PokerStars, unfortunately. Now, we're gonna look at some hands, of course, as well. Marked a couple of the big pots. Um, some winning hands, some losing hands, as usual. We have a yeah, rather marginal flat here, but against a fishy player. We flop really great, put in the flop race with a rep and a flush draw and a pair. 
um, bombed the turn. And on the river on the king, I think this is going to be overfolded quite a bit. Um, even though I have a six, maybe I shouldn't bluff with the six and just bluff if I don't have a pair and control my frequency a little bit that way. But I do think some of the time he's going to easily fold in at flush draw, of course, and sometimes even fold in at flush draw with a pair in it, like something like a6, maybe a8, even though that technically you should probably still call a bunch of them. Um, maybe not with an Atfasha, but some of the paired hands and, you know, even though they don't look strong on the river, my draw is still with uh, my combo draw, so he has to be stubborn. But if he has an Atfasha, I, I get him to fold. Unfortunately, he has an Atfasha plus a king and cost. It's one of the biggest pots. And here we got a guy who has been playing quite crazy. You can see the squeezes and re-steals like 17% of the time. We call his uh, ambitious three bet here. Flop, really great. Uh, I don't have a king high suit here, so I decided to just play turns. Also have a back to flush on an open ender and see what happens on the turn. I bink the best card in the entire deck. And uh, this guy just still mashes it in with like some two pair. And uh, we get in with like 90% and also hold for $123 pot. This is probably like the only pot though in the bankroll challenge on this day number 25 that went super well. Squeeze here with the nuts. Check raise all in on the flop and one lost. Here I fled. No, I actually do three bet against 100% uh, V pip. Uh, this should be fairly standard. Um, and I go for these sizings here. Um, on the river, I didn't even full pot, and he still shoves. And I call it off. I mean, there's not much that beats me in this. Uh, the fish, of course, and we do win another $80 pot. Here I get in there with, well, I think I was in a big blind and I flop nuts and a redraw. Now note that this hand here has this guy raising small to $3 and this guy call calling with the nuts. I three bet, he jams, call. And I look this hand up and because of the rake, the only thing that we make, like we got it in with 53% here. So technically, you know, you should be rewarded for having 53% in poker. A lot of the times you would be, but on micro six, it's just the rules. You aren't rewarded for getting it in with anything below 55%. Um, because there's some dead money, this is still gonna be profitable um, to get it in here. I mean, it's always better than folding, but uh, you know, we're basically making $3 here despite having 53% and the pot being super huge. Um, on average, and then he bings the back to flush draw and uh, scoops the 71 bucks. Here we three bet ace queen queen five in order to fold versus the four bet. The guy doesn't four bet aces, check check rainbow. Um, C bet a little bit too big, but it's fine. And we just barrel off and he just calls me down. Here we have a decent hand, check calling here on the flop with an open ended um, straight draw and the back to flush draw, bink the nut card and scoop this one. So this is a little bit of run, but you can also see the level of play here. This guy's been restilling me like 40% of the time. This time he has the nuts, but I flop well, turn even better, but then he gets there on the river. And a lot of that happened basically, you know, just re-steal three by pot, trying to flop better, trying to get it in with more than 50%, 55% on average, of course, in a single race pot and in a three by pot, um, the numbers are a little bit different. Here I have a set and an open ender against a combo draw that's also fairly strong. And uh, yes, this time it gets there as well. And yeah, here we got kings double suited and we got four bad, which is not great. But then this guy cold calls, this guy cold calls, and I mean, now we have an easy call. Um, on the flop, we get a little bit too much of a piece here. Uh, we have half SBR with this guy. I mean, we're not thrilled, but I have a seven, a backdoor flush draw and some backdoor straight draw. So I'm still on one fold here with exactly these pieces. And unfortunately, 40%, I mean, you know, we need a little bit more, I guess, but like 19 or something, or wait a second. 
So putting $16 into a $90 pot. Yeah, I mean, we couldn't fold anyway, even if we knew his hand like, almost. So yeah, this guy binks it with the 10, 9, 8, 5 single suited. And here we got not a double suited hand, top two pair, get the money in. This guy has a set with something. And here we got Jack, Jack nine, eight, double suited. Flop goes check, check, check. We turn a really strong draw and call on the river. We do make the second nuts and go all in. This guy made the nuts and he also goes all in. He doesn't have much money behind, so didn't like cost us the maximum here. But yeah, we lose this $68 pop. And here we play a three the pot. We flop, top head up kicker, um, two back to flush draws. Just a little bit too much for me to not go with it here. And uh, we get it in against, unfortunately, also set. And here we got a little bit too much to fall on a flop. We turn a boat and unfortunately he did only choose to flat call the aces here pre-flop if we just recall here, right? So a little bit hard for me to basically without any reads fold here versus a river shove after putting in quite a large bet and getting like one on how much? Seven, eight, one and seven on a call or something. Um, yeah, a little bit of a cooler of course. And I mean, all in all, you can see this is a pretty fair selection of some run good hands where I win like an, uh, quite a big amount, but then also a lot of the hands where I just didn't have the best of in a three, but pot. this has been the overall session here. You can see that, yeah, we ran quite some buy and see the below V. Obviously this is not good bankroll management practice if you were to do this without a bankroll challenge, but you know, I had to pace it up at some point I took the risk and I knew this could happen, of course. Uh, still, I was pretty annoyed during the bankroll challenge. Um, probably also, you know, pretty annoyed with the overall graph, of course. Um, you know, you just can't do much when you're running this much below EV. Uh, dropping to $200, I think, says it all. Um, it just, yeah, I knew that this could happen. Still disappointed, also annoyed by the rake. Don't play on poker stars, guys. Play on running ones poker. Play on other sites that you think are also trustworthy enough. Uh, and, and then, yeah, don't play on rake stars when you're playing micro six. It doesn't make much sense unless you want to get in some training and uh, don't care about the results whatsoever. And you just want to have a hut and, and just learn a little bit about the game. It doesn't matter where you play as long as you do have these hold and measure stats and then can take some key takeaways. Uh, some key takeaways for the bankroll challenge is that I probably have been not playing optimally again. Like there's obviously a lot of mistakes also on my end. Could I have won the bankroll challenge? No, I couldn't. It was impossible um, given the run that I had. Um, could I have played better? Yes, of course, as I said, I could have played less tables, getting in less volume. This might have been also disadvantageous, but this would have increased my big blinds per hundred to a higher number than 4.6, 4.7 or whatever that was. So yeah, I could have done better in terms of my play. Definitely were some punts in there. Uh, during the last session, I did have a really bad hand um, that I think was just for a hundred big blinds, but definitely a little bit unnecessary post flop. Um, yeah, I always recall a couple of hands that I wasn't fine with, of course. And, you know, you should always look for these things where you can change something about the result just by yourself. Um, but in the end, you know, it's poker, it's PLO. As I mentioned also on some of my Instagram stories, you know, I looked at my banker challenge. This is going to be one of the worst days that you can have in terms of how much you run below EV in a single day, I guess, um, over a couple of thousand hands. And uh, on the other hand, you know, we got the tournament, $109 PLO tournament during Scoop where I just won 460 buy-ins plus a leaderboard price of another 15 buy-ins just with that tournament alone because I wouldn't have won the leaderboard price. I wouldn't have won the 46K. So, you know, you have the ups and downs in poker. It's just what it is. Um, sometimes you just can't do much. And this is also what you know separates you in the end from other players. Like, yeah, you can be annoyed, but at the end of the day, you just have to get, take the next day as it comes. It's you know the variant as it comes, and 
you know, a lot of people who have this variance, they're just going to give up and early in their career and they get discouraged. And, and your job as a player is to not get discouraged by these results. Now, for the bankroll challenge, unless poker stars cuts the rake by like 50%, which is pretty much impossible for them to do, I guess. I don't think they're this generous. Um, you know, I will not be able to win the bankroll challenge on poker stars. Um, this has been, yeah unfortunately a failure but these um are you know that happens sometimes i want to thank you guys though for constantly tuning in to the bankroll challenge i hope you guys enjoyed it and got some learnings from it if at least uh, you learned that you have to play tighter with high rake and that you should probably not play with such high rake and you should be really cutting your tables down to a few tables and table select and game select a lot um, you've learned something and I uh, hope you can take that away from your uh, for your games. And yeah, thanks guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. If you want to get updates from me in the future, I'm going to be in APD Barcelona playing some normal stakes again up to maybe some high stakes. Um, I will see how the tables are. Anything between 5.5 5 and 20.40 uh, might be on the plate. Follow me on Instagram, link in the description below if you want to know what's up in Barcelona. And I'm going to see you guys on this channel next time.